Hi, I am Dr. Amos Yav. I myself am a clinician, the inventor of the biphasic calcium sulfate and the CEO of Agma Biomaterials. Today I would like to demonstrate how to work with 3D bone, bone graft cement. 3D bone is a pure biphasic calcium sulfate. It's a short-term space maintainer, therefore is indicated to be used in small defect such as socket grafting from first central until second premolar or molar with existing septum. If you want to use it in a larger defect, then you should combine it with a slow resorbable granules or you can use our second product, which is the bond appetite, which is already made a composite graft. Now, 3D bond comes in two different packages, in two different sizes. One is of half cc, two syringes in a box, and the other one is of 1cc, again, two syringes in a box. Together with the kit, we provide you an application kit which contains two vials of sterile saline, a needle, and a syringe. Now, let's get started. First, fill the activating syringe with a sterile saline from the vial. Make sure that the syringe is entirely filled with the saline. Now, this is the 3D bond driver. It contains the powder, two indicating line, number one and number two, a shaft, driver head, and a cup. Now first, push the shaft until it reach line number one. Now, remove the small cup from the syringe and insert the needle all the way down into the driver. Now withdraw about one millimeter in order to enable the liquid surplus to spill out from the syringe and start ejecting the cell line inside the driver. You continue until a small drop is coming out from the syringe. Now remove the application syringe and from a distance hold the syringe hand and start pushing slowly until you gain a complete resistance. It's not necessary that your shaft will reach line number two. You just need to gain a complete resistance. At this point, remove the 3D bone head, approach to the socket site and start ejecting the material into the socket. Take a dry gauze and press a bow with your finger. If you don't have a place for your finger, you can use a spatula or an elevator prayer stall to press it above the gauze. It is very important to remember that in four bony wall socket, you shouldn't use a tool to try to condense the material into the bottom of the socket as you are used to do with granules. This might exert pain to the patient due to the cement expansion. Now, you cannot leave the material exposed to the oral environment. You must protect it with something. For that purpose, you can use a simple collagen sponge or a membrane, up to your preference. But you must protect it. The collagen sponge is intended to protect the graft from the masticatory force and it is sutured together with the soft tissue around it. The technique is very simple. Insert the needle from the buccal aspect, hold the collagen sponge in your hand and insert the needle into the bottom side of the collagen sponge. Then from the upper side down Now, insert the needle into the lingual aspect of the soft tissue and place the sponge above the socket and make your first suture. Now, continue 
with a crisscross suturing to hold the sponge in place. And make your second suture. That's how it should look when you finish the procedure. Leaving in that way, soft tissue will migrate above the graft and in two weeks the grafted site will be covered by the soft tissue. Due to the transformation of the graft into the patient on bone, the radiographic appearance is completely different than what we are used to see when we use other graft. First day it's going to appear radiopec, after one week radiolucency will appear in the border and up to three weeks a complete disappearance of the graft will be reflected by the radiolucency appearance in the radiography. This is the time that the osteoid is formed before calcification and up to three months radio opacity will be gained again with the same trabecular form of the bone.